what's up everybody this is Brad again I just wanted to um, show you guys some pictures from the new 70 to 200 Sigma uh, the sports lens um, I did the unboxing and the initial review 10 days or so ago um, and I've had a little bit of time now to play with it and and really sort of get used to it and I just wanted to provide a couple of pictures since it took me a little while to get this done. I actually ended up, like the day after I made the original video, I ended up selling my 6D sort of on a whim, ended up buying an EOS R. Uh, I had to wait on that to get here, so uh, it got here Thursday. So I've had a little bit of time over the weekend to just sort of play with it, um, nothing special, and just wanted to show you guys some pictures. And uh, overall, I think this is one of the best 7200s I've ever seen. I think it stacks right up there with Canon's, if not better. The stabilizer, in my opinion, works better than the Canon version. The Chromatica, I'll show you a bunch of these, but the Chromatic Aberration is almost non-existent. It's got a little bit of green here and there, but we'll take a look at these here in a moment. And I was just blown away. There's, there's hardly any flare, hardly any chromatic aberration at all, shooting directly into the sun against high contrast areas. I mean, it's, it's, it's so, so good and so much better than any other lens I've ever shot with. So let's just take a quick peek through these. Uh, I won't spend a whole lot of time, but this was the first one I shot. I think this was the day I got the day I got the lens a while back. This was at ISO 100, 200 millimeter, and f2.8. This is straight out of camera. All of these pictures are gonna be just raw, straight out of camera, no correction whatsoever, no adjustments, chromatic aberration, nothing uh, done to them, just straight imported into Lightroom, and I put them in a quick collection. So, so if we zoom in here, uh, we can see around the edge, I mean, very little if anything, um, and I've got I've got an example later that actually does show a decent little bit of chromatic aberration, but uh, and it's a similar shot to this. But in this particular one, um, you do see a little bit of kind of ghosting around the edges here. But I think that may just be some of the backlight, possibly just making a little bit of a, a flare at at this size here. I mean, that's I think that's actually kind of pretty picture. Um, but well, let's keep on moving. This was me testing the stabilizer. So you can see here, this is ISO 800. We've got 200 millimeter. This is f2.8 at 1 60th of a second. I mean, 1 60th of a second at 200 millimeter. That's pretty solid, sharp uh, image there. So I'm gonna keep on rolling here so we can look at the uh, shutter here. So we're at 1 60th and I think I went down by a stop every time here. So here's 1 30th of a second at 200 millimeter. That's completely usable. That's very, very, very good. Completely usable. Crisp, crisp enough shot uh, to print. This is 1 15th of a second. And this is me just standing, hand holding the lens. Nothing special, not propped against anything. Literally me just standing there holding the lens. So that's at 1 15th of a second, 200 millimeter. Still looks really good and really crisp. And these are one to one. So uh, here's one eighth, and you can see it's starting to get, a, it's starting to lose a little bit of sharpness. We're getting a little bit of movement here on the words. Let's keep on rolling, and it starts to get uglier, obviously, as we go down here. So this is quarter second at 200 millimeter. My arm was probably getting pretty tired from holding on to this big old heavy lens for <laughs> a few frames as well. Uh, and then obviously, as we keep going down, half a second. I mean, even still for a half a second shot, that's not terrible, but. Uh, yeah, then a second, it's it's gone. This was a shot I did yesterday. I'm actually shooting through a cage here. So um, that's very, very good looking. Again, no correction. Oh, no, I take that back. I did pull the contrast up on the, and the clarity up on this one. So let's go back to, this is raw, straight out of camera. Still, I mean, still looks great. Still looks great. I forgot I messed with this one a little bit. But overall, I think it looks great. I think the sharpness in the beak is good. And especially if you start, uh, like we did here, I you know pop up a little bit of clarity. Uh, not a ton, just enough to get a little more sharpness in here. I think it's a good looking picture, man. I think it's, I think it's pretty. I think it's another one here. Yeah, it's another one I sort of pulled the colors out of here. This is 200 millimeter. 2.8, pretty image. I wish the eye had some detail in it to show off, but it's a pretty dull looking eye for a hawk. But if you look here, and you can see each of the you know, lines here in the feathers, sort of the cross hatch pattern up here. Um, I mean, it's that is solid. 
That's a very, very nice look on that lens. So I had my daughter sort of just stand in the room, pose very sharp. Very, very good. The resolution's great. Another one. Most of these now are just her messing around here in the house or in the backyard. And again, these are this is straight out of camera, no adjustments, no nothing. But it's a it's a great sharp lens. I mean that thing is that's tack sharp. This is 200, uh, no, sorry, this is 89 millimeter. 89 millimeter, 2.8. Uh, and you can see too, at 89 millimeter, you're still getting a, a nice out of focus area. And she was standing moderately close to this, this door frame here, maybe two and a half feet away from it. We'll take a look here, just a little backlit shot. Uh, the eye is nice and crisp. You can see the hair is nice and crisp. Very pretty and very shallow. <laughs> Uh, this was 200 millimeter, 200 millimeter 2.8. Um, the out of focus areas on this lens are incredibly pretty. It's very creamy. It's very non-distracting. The out of focus area in this thing is absolutely great. Here's another one. Sharp as can be. These are all one to one. Um, again, the hair is nice. Out of focus areas look great. This one was my dog running at me. Uh, and this one you can see, this was probably more of me missing focus uh, with the EOS R because I still am kind of getting used to the modes on it. It's it's definitely a little different. I mean, you can see in the fur and stuff where it did catch. Uh, it's, it's nice. It's very nice. All right, so this was a backlit scene. The sun is just over the frame here, and there's... I mean, pretty much zero flare whatsoever. There's pretty much no flare at all. You, know, you would almost expect with the sun being this close to the, the lens, you would almost expect there to be a pretty decent amount of lens flare coming across. Now we do have the very you know low contrast look with the, the almost matte look that you get you know when you shoot into the sun. A little contrast boost on that and some dehaze, uh, you know. We'll quickly bring that back in check. Um, and even even here still, when you pull the dehaze up all the way, which I wouldn't obviously do, there's no. A lot of times you can, if you pull the if you pull the dehaze slider all the way up in a, in a backlit shot, a lot of times that will sort of show you the flare. And there's, I mean, there's just none. There's just no flare on this thing. Um, so again, great shot, one to one. Uh, looks very very good. Here's one, this is 134 millimeter, 2.8 again. You can see the background area here, how it really just sort of, it almost looks like a painting. It's so pretty, the out of focus area. So I really, really love the bokeh on this thing. I'll keep on rolling here. But you can see just how sharp, I mean, all the little hairs, everything. And what I was afraid of was my 85 needed a pretty good tweaking in the Sigma software and um, it, it front focused up close and then the further away it got it was back focusing um, I had to pull the I had to pull the sliders back towards me um, a pretty good amount and I was afraid that this was going to be the same way but I mean as of right now it's this thing is it's tack sharp okay so here is one I shot at 200 millimeter f 2.8 into straight into the sun sun's right here I mean it's it's straight into the sun no correction. I played with this earlier to make sure this is off. So let me take remove chromatic aberration off. And let's go in one to one. And normally in this particular type of shot, you're gonna see a ton of green or or magenta fringing on these things, um, especially where they're they're like highly clustered. And this is with no correction right now. This is straight out of camera, straight out of the lens. And it's, it's almost non-existent in this shot. It does exist, and I'll show you where here in a second. And, and you're, you're starting to see it here. Uh, the left, I'm mean, sorry, the right side of the frame has quite a bit more for whatever reason. It does not stand out to me at one-to-one, -one, hardly at all. Here's, okay, okay, here's a good example. Right here around this branch, you've got some green, you've got some in here. You've got some in here. Um, so this this particular section of the frame, this is kind of the bottom or the kind of the right 
edge definitely has the most. However, it's not incredibly noticeable. But check this out. I mean, the, the software is good enough too. So you, you can see the, the green fringing here pretty, pretty decently. Literally just click the, I mean, I know you guys know this, click the remove chromatic aberration, it's gone. It's just completely gone. So, I mean, it's just gone. I'm so impressed with with the lens as far as the way that thing performs with aberrations because um, a lot of times zooms and wide open, you're gonna get a whole lot of green and a whole lot of magenta when you're shooting into the sun or shooting in super high contrast situations. And I mean, and there's just literally none here to be spoken of at all. So I tried this one too, uncheck that. So now we're back to just the standard straight out of camera shot here. You can see the sharpness here on this glass. This is at one to one. I mean, even at three to one, uh, it's still it's still super sharp, even at three to one here. Uh, so one to one, okay, so on this one, there's a little hint of like magenta fringing here on the top, just a little bit. Um, and if, if I didn't know any better, I'd almost just say it's from the red. I know that the you guys can't tell here, but the base of this hummingbird feeder is red. So I thought it might be, you know, just a little reflection of that, but no, it's it's a little bit of magenta fringing. The same thing, it does such a good job in the software getting rid of it that it's, I mean, it's so minimal as I click it. I mean, it's, you can almost not even, it's so minimal you can barely even tell it's there. Um, but the sharpness there, again, I, the, the sun is actually back here behind this hummingbird feeder. So um, shooting straight into the sun, the sharpness is incredible. It focused great in those lighting conditions and super, super fast. That's another thing too. So here's another one. The sun is up here. I just tried to position it a little differently. Again, tack sharp on these things at one to one, even again at three to one, but one to one there. I mean, it's, you can see all the fine details in here. And this is with zero sharpening added too. So, I mean, you know, we could go in here and grab the sharpening slider and pick it up just a bit more, put it about 70. I mean, and just look at that. That is insane. Very nice, but again, like pretty much nothing in the way of chromatic aberration. I have no correction on right here at all. Uh, you would expect to see some some magenta or green sort of around this area where it's super high contrasty. Um, same thing around the edges. You would expect to see um, a little bit. Not there. It's just not there. There's a little bit of magenta up here up top. You'll see it go away when I push the button. It's just. It's so minimal, you can't even tell. I, again, could not be happier as far as that goes. Uh, this is just another high contrast shot. I was just checking it again. Um, no correction here. As you can see too, this is at 200 millimeter, uh, 2.8. Nice, perfectly crispy sharp. Um, again, just add a little bit of sharpening here if you need to. Um, I typically don't sharpen that much, especially don't feel like I need to with this. Um, now that's not a shot obviously that I'm gonna print or hang, but uh, let's keep on rolling. Okay, so this is 70 millimeter. And typically speaking, I usually have found that zooms have a lot worse chromatic aberration at the wider end of the, the range. Uh, and that is the case here uh, for sure. So at 70 millimeter, while it's not blatantly obvious because we did have a, a decent sunset. So this this kind of patch right here is actually some color from the sun, from the sky behind it. It's not like a magenta kind of hue that gets thrown in sometimes. This one does have a decent amount of fringing at 70 millimeter. Let's go three to one here. And you can you can begin to see it. Um, and, and I did expect it at 70 a lot more than at 200. For instance, here, you can see it pretty badly. Pretty, I mean, th this is actually not good. But the again, the software does such a good job picking that up. Click one button and it's literally just gone. I mean, I've had other lenses where uh, it, the, the aberration is so bad that even when you do the correction in the, in the software, that it still doesn't pick it all up. Maybe the moral of the story is don't shoot into the sun at 70 millimeters. So I would say at 200, it's as close to perfect, I think, as I've seen. All right, so I was trying to show the focus breathing when I first got the thing, or the lack thereof, I should say. It handles the focus breathing so, so well. 
So this first one here, so this is the sigma on a tripod zoomed all the way in. And you can see there's really no focused breathing happening at all here. None whatsoever, um, or at least a, a very, very small amount. Um, so that's the Sigma. The next one I'm gonna show you here is actually the Canon. This is the Canon Mark III 7200. And it looks, I mean, so much more, or us, uh, very similar. There's very, very little difference between the two. So there's the Canon one. Here's the Sigma. You can see that the out of focus object isn't like changing size at all. It's actually just coming into focus more. Um, with, with, I know the Tamron 7200, it has a very, very bad focus breathing effect. So at 200, it doesn't act like 200 at all. Yeah, this is the Sigma again, because what happened was I think the Sigma focuses just a hair closer. So the first one I did was actually um, at the closest focus distance. By the way, these are at the closest focus distance that the lens will go to. So um, I found when I went to do the Canon one that when I put it on the tripod, it was I couldn't get it in focus because the minimum distance seemed to be a little hair further away. So. Um, I did just want to show that because I know a lot of people have concerns about the focus bre breathing on this because the Tamron's so bad. Um, I'm happy to report that I don't see any any significant difference between the Canon and the Sigma here. Okay, so this is no, this is 70 millimeter with no uh, stabilizer at all. You can actually almost see the pulse in my hand here. Um, and then the next one is going to be 70 millimeters with the stabilizer. All right, now it's on. It keeps everything very in line. Um, and the next we've got 200 millimeter, no stabilizer. Again, you can actually see the pulse in my hand, the doom, 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 um, which I think that's pretty crazy. I've never really, never really picked up on that before. And then 200 millimeter with the stabilizer. All right, and I think that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna respond as quick as possible. But I hope you guys liked the pictures. Uh, they're nothing special, nothing flashy, but I just wanted to show you the aesthetic of the lens, the way it produces, the way it resolves. And overall, I, again, I think it's the best 7200 on the market, especially for Canon users. The big thing is the price on the Sigma is only $1499 compared to the Canon at $2100. The Nikon is like $2700, I think it is. So you're looking at a $1300 difference if you're a Nikon shooter, whereas on the Canon, it's only about a $600 difference. But I just can't imagine spending the extra money for either one of those lenses based on what I'm getting out of this one. I think it's phenomenal. Plus the customization that it offers as far as the different autofocus modes, which I have actually started using. I pretty much keep my lens on the C1 custom one um, function right now because I've got it tweaked to be a little bit faster on autofocus. I like the fact that you can customize the lens. I like the fact that you can do the micro adjustments to the focusing. Overall, I mean, Build quality, 10 out of 10 on this thing. Um, value is absolutely a 10 out of 10. And just overall image quality, I would put it at a 10 out of 10. It, it gets 10s all around for me. I think it's perfect. I think it's I think it's the best 70 to 200 on the market at the moment. So hopefully this answered some questions for you guys. And if you have any questions, like I said, just leave them below. Um, I'll check them and try to respond as soon as they come in. So 